Hi everyone, welcome to Edison Bob. Today we talk about Polkadot net flows and we're going to answer the question where does dot flow? So we are actually going to follow the money, we're going to follow the trail of value within the Polkadot ecosystem. So in the Polkadot ecosystem we have all of those parachains, the individual blockchains and dot, the token of the Polkadot ecosystem, is flowing and being deposited onto the chains. And I was asking myself the question of where is it actually flowing? Uh, which chains are gaining DOT? Which chains are losing DOT? How do they rank relatively to each other? And can I gain something interesting uh, in knowing which chains are performing better or worse? So it took me about three weeks to come up with this result with gathering the data, coding and visualization, uh, making sure everything is correct. and. I found two interesting things that I want to share with you today. Uh, so let's get started. To give you a little bit of a background, uh, for the last year I've been building an analytics service and this is the thing that has enabled me to perform this anal uh, analysis. So I'm calling it Pokalytics and it basically allows me to create account reports. So reports on individual accounts on what they are doing, how are they behaving, how is their balance changing and what is the reason for the balance changes. Uh, and this enabled me to perform this kind of analysis. So today we're going to look at what are exchange net flows? What does this word even mean in this concept? We're going to look at parachain net flows. So how I'm translating this concept of exchange net flows and translating it to parachain net flows. We're going to look at the Kusama network first and then the Polkadot uh, Polka network. And you're seeing an interactive visualization of the thing. And then we're going to share a few learnings. So let's start out with a simple question. What are exchange net flows actually? So exchange net flows are basically a quantitative indicator that is used in technical analysis to inform traders about uh, what is, is there a bullish or a bearish signal? And so an exchange net flow is, let's say you have big exchanges like Binance, Kraken and so on. And people are depositing Bitcoin, ETH, DOT, and so on to the exchange accounts. So every centralized exchange also has a few wallets on chain. And whenever tokens are flowing to the exchange, what could it mean? It could mean that those tokens are about to get sold on the exchange. While when tokens are moving out of those exchange wallets, it could mean that people bought tokens on the centralized exchange are moving them on chain now to basically secure them and make sure they're not getting lost. So an inflow of tokens into an exchange could be seen as a sell signal, as a bearish signal. An outflow of tokens from the exchange could be seen as a buy signal or as a bullish signal. Of course, uh, you have to consider this is just one indicator of many, and so it should not alone inform your trading strategy, but it is a very interesting indicator on seeing how is the market overall performing in the actual behavior of people. And it's a quantitative way to look at it. So exchange net flows usually consider all existing exchanges or they're looking at a specific exchange and then asking, is this exchange gaining or losing tokens? So in this, demographic that you see here, this is from CryptoQuant.com and it's Bitcoin. So the white line you're seeing here is the Bitcoin price over time. And the green and the red lines are exchange inflows or exchange outflows. So you can see that uh, if we pick an example, so I think this one is a very nice example. You can see here there was basically a price drop and then uh, you can see there is much more red volume here than there is green volume. So this, the green volume here is very sparse. The red volume here is very uh, dense. So it means more tokens are still being moved to exchanges and are getting sold. And then you see here this big drop here. A lot of people are sell moving tokens to the exchange to sell them. Um, and then maybe on the opposite side here, so here you can see a very dense green field. So people are buying tokens and moving them out of the exchange. So these are exchange net flows. Okay, now let's take this concept and translate it over to parachains. So on Polkadot, we have 
quite a few parachains already live and they are already interacting. They are sending tokens back and forth between the exchange, uh, between the parachains and there is quite a lot of activity. This graphic here is from Subscan. So they have a very nice XCM Explorer that allows you to explore the actual data of which channels between parachains are the hottest channels, where are the most transactions happening, what are the latest transactions and so on. And so what I did is I went to Subscan and I took note of all the parachains. I figured out what are the addresses of those uh, accounts on Polkadot. So every parachain has their own sovereign account on Polkadot. And by looking at the sovereign account and measuring when did it gain DOT and when did it lose DOT, I can measure when is there an inflow of DOT into that parachain and when is there an outflow of DOT from that parachain. And it gives us a little bit of a comparison. Um, yeah, so this is a list of addresses that I created and I think it's time now we can look at the first analysis and that is of the Kusama flows. So this is an interactive graphic so I can hover over the things here, over the lines and we will now take a look and understand what is happening here on Kusama. So on the right side here you can find a description so it is color coded. Each chain is having uh, their own color and they are ranked by the chain that has the most tokens here at the last timestamp. So you will find Moon River first, Karura second and so on and so on and so on. Okay, let's look at what we're actually seeing here. So we have, uh, let's start with Karura because it was the first one to start. You see that it had a very sharp rise to 160,000 KSM and then a gradual decline and now it is ranging between 60,000 KSM and I would say 70,000 KSM, right? So uh, Karura was obviously, it was the very first parachain to start. So everyone was very excited to get their tokens there uh, and basically do something here. And then you can see the de decline here already happening, I guess, when activity on other chains was already starting and more opportunities were opening up. Also, simultaneously, simultaneously, I think if you look at the time frame, uh, we had the peak of the bull market or the confirmation that a bear market is setting in here. So this decline can also be explained by the onsetting bear market. Okay, so this is Karura. Then we see Moon River here, which saw a nice steady growth here, uh, also reaching um, 150, 155,000 KSM and uh, it's declining a little bit recently. Okay, what do, else do we see? Okay, we see Bifrost. There is some inter interesting happening on Bifrost. So it has some initial activity uh, going sideways and then you have these spikes here. So you have a spike here, spike here, spike here, spike here, uh, a little bit of movement up and down and the sideways movement here. So what do the spikes mean? Uh, these spikes are interesting and we're going to see them on a few other trains as well on Kusama and on Polkadot. Um, I have a thesis and I was checking in with Bifrost, so this could be a confirmation. The most likely explanation is that this is uh, liquid staking. So Bifrost and a few other chains are offering liquid staking products where you can deposit DOT and you can get liquid staked DOT a representation. And what I'm suspecting here is that DOT is actually moving to those chains and then uh, is moved into a staking account. So it's not captured by my account analysis, which only looks at the sovereign accounts, but it is moved into sovereign accounts. If this is true, then all of Bifrost should actually even be bigger here. But this, is a, uh, this would be another analysis that might be coming in the future. So uh, it would be interesting to see if it is true. Uh, it's really hard to say at the moment, but it could mean that this was a very March depositing event. Um, and then uh, the, all these spikes is when uh, DOT is more moving through Bifrost. So either to go into liquid staking or to go out of liquid staking. And maybe even liquid staking net flows would be a very interesting follow-up project. Okay, let's move on. We have Kintsugi here. So Kintsugi is the Bitcoin parent chain on Karura. Uh, also a nice and steady flow. And then we see Heiko. And Heiko from Parallel also has these uh, spikes. 
So you can, for example, even see that they're coinciding here, here and here. So there might even be a possibility that some people are look at staking on both protocols. So there is a very nice, um, a very nice coincidence here, even here, uh, tokens going into Moon River, going into Corora. So this looks like if you, if you look at the spike here, you see an orange spike here, a blue spike, you see a, a violet spike. Uh, green also. So it seems like a whale was buying around this point in time and just moving tokens into the different parachains. Um, so this is also another thing that we see from this analysis here is that we can actually visualize coincidences of big token movements and then zoom in and see what is actually happening there, which would be very exciting for the future. Okay, so Heiko is also seeing the spikes here. Then we see Mangata. So Mangata is basically going sideways, uh, moving a little bit up here. Disclaimer, I have a contractual relationship with Mangata. And here you can see a small uh, spike down. So this was actually when a governance incident happen happened. Uh, tokens moved on the chain and were later replenished. Um, so we see positive and negative spikes here. And then Basilisk uh, has a similar story, trade going up, going sideways, and Picasso also. Okay, so summary, we see uh, actually a, a little bit of a chaotic behavior here if you compare it to Polkadot. Um, the field is much closer on how chains are basically in their relationship to how much dots they have. So let's compare it with what we're going to see on Polkadot now. So this is the Polkadot chart. Uh, and also important to consider, I filtered out results that were very low on the chart here. So these, this analysis is only showing the top addresses with more than 1000 KSM at the point of the last measurement. The same here for Polkadot here, only chains with more than 10,000 dots. That would be $60,000 as of today. Um, so what do we see here? We see uh, number one here on this chart is Akala. And for some time it was surpassed by Moonbeam. So Akala now we see those spikes and this could be a signal that maybe also a liquid staked dot is uh, in play here or maybe any other of the Akala products. Um, yeah, so this could, uh, so basically what we see is that uh, Akala was moving up here and then has been ranging sideways with those spike events that we can see here uh, for in number. Then we have Moonbeam and I think Moonbeam has a, a very interesting story here. So Moonbeam has been ranging up until the November of 2022 uh, to 3.5 million dot and has since been ranging down to a little bit under a million dots. So this is the biggest movement that we can see here in total. And uh, what's also interesting here to me is that actually this is uh, to me the most organic look looking movement because uh, when we see a lot of sideways ranging movement, uh, one could speculate that um, these are long term holders or whales that are here for the very long term, do not care so much about the, the short-term implications. So that could be investors, it could be whales, it could be convinced people, uh, early investors and so on, early backers. Uh, while here you see a lot of up and down movements, so this could indicate that it's much more retail driven. Okay, we're going to parallel. Parallel uh, has a lot of uh, movement up and down here, but it's also basically ranging between half a million dot and uh, one, 1 1.2 million dot here with a few up and down movements here. And now one commonality that you can see here is also here, this triple spike of Akala, Moonbeam and Parallel spiking at about the same time. So this could also be a signal um, of a bigger investor, a whale moving in buying uh, tokens or going into these ecosystems. And then we have, whoops, what did I do? I did zoom in. Um, Zoom out, show me the whole picture. Okay, <laughs> um, okay, we're moving to Interlay here. Uh, Interlay, a similar story to Kusama, basically ranged up to one like 600,000 dot and now is arranging sideways with a, bit, a little bit of up and down. Uh, and then we're having Astar here. 
So Astar uh, is an interesting story because it was going up to a million dot or let's say 800, yeah, almost 900,000 dot and uh, then ranging down again and sort of now it's arranging sideways. And then other chains that we have here is Hydra DX, Bifrost and Equilibrium. Right, so this is basically uh, concludes our detailed view on this thing. So let's zoom out a little bit. If you want to read the whole report for yourself, uh, there is a Notion page that I created. Um, there is also a GitHub repository, uh, and there are a few more explanations here on things that we're seeing. I think the most interesting thing to see is these spikes. So this would be very interesting to look into and also understand a little bit of the behavior of which users are actually driving the behavior. Um, how are chains? Um, and then in the future, we could also look into if basically the rank of chains is changing, does it match with market sentiment? Does it match with price? So this would actually be an interesting conversation. Um, but I'm also very much interested to hear what you have to say about those things. So any thoughts that come to you, uh, to your mind here about what you see, uh, any speculation, any uh, potential questions to explore for the future, I would be very interested to hear them if you put them in the comments uh, so that I could look at that in the future. Um, yeah, there is a GitHub repository that uh, contains the data set that I used to create the visualization and it creates a little bit of Python code to create the visualization. So you can fork the repository, play around um, and look into the data if you see anything that's in Python. Um, I'm also very happy if you give the video a thumbs up, if you click on subscribe and of course if you follow me on Twitter at Bob. I'm regularly posting on-chain analysis and the latest news from Polkadot and I'm also venturing out into other ecosystems, want to learn more about them. Uh, so any videos of that will be coming to the YouTube channel. And if you uh, want to reach out and are interested in a dedicated analysis of a chain that you're representing, of a protocol that you're representing or working for or building for, you can definitely reach out or just subscribe to the newsletter um, and also can book a call on the site. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching the video. Stay safe. Goodbye.